Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about something that I think comes up fairly often in our society and in life, but that I think people don't always handle it in the best possible way. And that is how to talk to someone who is doing something that's harming someone. So it could be harming another person or harming themselves. I think that it's really empowering to think about these sorts of conversations in terms of three separate scenarios. So the scenarios are, one, that the person knows that what they're doing is harmful, and they just don't know how to stop doing it. The second scenario is they really de genuinely don't know that the behavior is harmful. And the third scenario is that they know that some people think the behavior is harmful, but they don't agree with that. They don't personally believe that it's harmful. So I want to give examples of all of these. Examples of the first one would be if a person is in a relationship where they are abusing another person, and they know that it's harming the other person, and they feel caught in that situation, they feel like out of control. Uh, another example of that is if a person is injuring themselves. It could be like physical self-injury, or it could be just engaging in some sort of behavior that's emotionally unhealthy for them and is harming them emotionally. Uh, so those are two examples of like harming another person, harming themselves, and the person feels trapped. They don't know how to stop that behavior. So the second scenario is really different. Let's give some examples of that. That's when the person genuinely doesn't know that what they're doing is harming another person. A good example of that is someone says something to me, and they think it's just completely fine, but I feel either really offended by it, or I feel like it, maybe it triggers some past trauma, and maybe it's something that is just like a really random trigger, and they have no idea that it reminds me of this difficult situation. Uh, I think in those cases it's really different. Like, I, I would talk to that person very differently. Okay, and an example of the third scenario would be, I think this comes up a lot, parenting styles. There are a lot of people who have like a more authoritarian parenting style on one hand, and there are people who have like a very sort of free-for-all parenting style, and there are all sorts of things in between, and all sorts of different parenting styles. And people can sometimes have strong opinions on this. Like, I've heard people express being appalled. They're like, oh my god, how can they let their kids do that? They're, that's horrible, they're harming their kids. And then that parent might look at the first parent and be like, oh my god, how can they be so rigid and strict with their kids? That's being really cruel and abusive towards them. So I think this sort of thing, there can be this, this disagreement there. That's just one example. There are a wide range of issues on which people don't agree whether or not a certain behavior is harming someone. So what's the use of thinking about these three scenarios? I think the use of it is to think about how to talk to someone. Because if you're approaching someone, and you assume that you're dealing with one scenario, but you're really dealing with another scenario, you can make it a lot worse. Like a good example of this, say someone is harming another person, and the person really knows it, but you assume that they don't know, and you, you go on this long tirade about how what they're doing is harming that other person. Well, that person might be caught in a cycle of guilt. So by you emphasizing how much they're hurting the other person, you're just like twisting the knife. And you might actually make it more likely that that person could continue with a harmful behavior. I've also seen this with self-injury. A lot of people I know who struggle with self-injury have expressed that they get caught in this cycle of guilt, and that when people really drill it into them how they're hurting themselves, it's like there's kind of like a no shit Sherlock moment. It's like, of course you're doing this, but like that's missing the point. It's like there's this whole other struggle that what the person is saying is not speaking to. And I think these sorts of things can make it a lot worse, a lot harder for the person to stop the harmful behavior. So that's a really important thing to be aware of. Like before you give advice to the person or say anything to the person, try to figure out if the person knows whether or not the behavior is harming someone. And don't like emphasize how much it is if it's clear that the person already knows. Similarly, 
don't assume that the person does know. There are a lot of times when people just generally don't know how things could be harming people. So, if you're kind of offering this support and encouragement for someone to stop the behavior, it, it might be confusing to them if they don't really understand that the behavior is harmful. So I think that that one goes both ways. Now dealing with this third scenario I think is the trickiest of the three, uh, but I think it's important to be mindful of it. Like if you're dealing with something where you believe that something is harmful, but the other person doesn't, I think being mindful of that can help you to have a more constructive conversation about it. I recommend not presenting your viewpoint as if it were the only correct viewpoint, and listening to and acknowledging their viewpoint. So one way to do this is through I statements. Don't be like, oh my god, that's so wrong, what you're doing is really harmful. You could say, well, that's not how I would handle this situation, and I'd be worried that what you're doing might be harmful because of the following things, and then maybe you could explain something for like, from the other person's perspective. Like you could say, I've been on the receiving end of this behavior, and when people treat me like this, this is how I feel, and this is how I perceive it. And I'm not saying that the other person necessarily perceives it in this way, but I think it's important to be mindful that that's a possibility, and to examine your own behavior and think, well, could I possibly be harming this person? And I think if you talk about it that way, I think you'll be much more likely to get through to the person than if you use really rigid and absolute language like, oh, like, how could you think that? Of course what you're doing is harming this person, and the worst would be like, using personal attacks or like judgmental language, and I see people doing that all the time. So I hope you've gained some insight from this, and I hope that you can be mindful that there are these different scenarios. Like if you see someone engaging in a harmful behavior, and you want to encourage them to stop that behavior, help them to stop it, I think it's helpful to first talk to them and listen to them and figure out which of those scenarios you're dealing with. Does the person know that it's harmful? And are they struggling to stop? Do they not know that it's harmful? Or do they not agree that it's harmful? Which of those are you dealing with? And then act accordingly. So I hope you find this useful. I'd love to hear from you, as always, if you have something to share, uh, please comment, and please share my videos and subscribe if you like what I have to say. Thank you!